There you are, welcome back. I'm in Malta, thanks to Construct 3D. And in Malta is my friend David and Invent 3D. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. I can't believe I'm here seeing this in person for the first time. Really happy to have you here. It's so cool to finally meet you. Most of this is your fault. I got my first, <laughs> out, I got my first uh, CR10 after watching that very first video. Oh, that was years ago. Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd. Uh, I have next to me, this is the CR10. This is the Creality CR10. 3D printer. That was a long time ago. I still have the body <laughs> somewhere there. But From uh... the CR10 carcass, the Invent 3D space has been born. We're standing in front of a Prusa farm, and I have thoughts on this that I want to talk to you about. But before we do that, how did Invent 3D get started? You did talk about the CR10, but how did it go from there? So I, I am an engineer by profession. Um, I left my full-time job about four years ago. So me and my wife decided to start off something where we could be innovative, and we could manufacture our own products. So that turned into a one car garage, which me and my wife rented together. We had about three or four printers back Just then. three or four back three then. Three or four okay. printers back then. Um, one very small 16 square meter garage space. And that grew. We started penetrating different industries, went into prototyping, manufacturing, trophies, 3D design, um, and more recently, like industry factory support helping people develop sustainable products. And that's where we are now. This is four years later, and these are our machines. We employ six people. Uh, at this point, we have around 150 3D printers, uh, depending on how many die and how many we purchase. <laughs> As of now, we just ordered another 20 Prusa Minis. 20 print. more. We need more printers, always. There's a lot to showcase here. And don't worry, you're gonna get to see it all. But let's talk about this first, because this is a Prusa farm essentially yes. within within your space and i know about this i run a prusa farm myself the noise that that it makes i mean you're familiar with it as am i and it just it just gives me a little bit of anxiety but i see that what you're printing here with all these prusa machines if i if i'm correct these are all final products these are things that go into consumers hands yes so so we use 3d printing as our tool and our means to an end so we use it for prototyping, we use it for one-offs, we use it for trophies, and we use it for the final product. So these are products that we're creating for an upcoming event for uh, fantasy football. Uh, we've made, That's cool. I think it's 450 pieces so far, we need another 50. Um, uh, these are just giveaway items for everyone who's attending because there's a European uh, Blood Bowl League happening in Malta. Here we have a mix of dice cups, trophy components, um, I think that's all the Prusas are doing at the moment. And you're running filamentive, these are recycled material, right? Yes, we've pushed uh, into recycled filament. We've pushed away from the plastic spools as much as possible. I know that a lot of manufacturers haven't gotten quite on the bandwagon yet. It's gonna beep soon. I do like the cardboard <laughs> spools though. Cardboard this is really nice. Here. And I like your method of attaching them. You're actually, you're not on the Prusa frame itself. You're on the shelf and it's a zip tie as a guide. Here in your building, when we, we took a little tour beforehand, <laughs> I'm gonna unload it. This is what it takes to run a print farm right here. So when running a farm, as David knows, you do have to have filament on hand. So we've pulled out the old filament and it looks like uh, there's a little bin right here. And here's the old spool. You can take this and uh, create a table. That's awesome. I like that I came here to talk to you about your space and you're putting me to work. Yes, it's important. We have 14, some are here, some are in the enclosures, which we'll look at later. Oh, we'll look at that in a little the bit. The Prusas have been the most, they are workhorses, 24 hour machines. They've, the breakdowns that they have are very, very minimal. Replacement parts are easy to come by. So these are our, right now our machine of choice. We are looking at the AFS, the automated system. Oh, so we have the code. I've seen that. Yes. Have you seen, it's so, it's good. that's it's good. really it's good. cool. We already know the configuration we're going for and we're looking to test it out. You know what, I'm gonna let these machines work here. They've got a lot of work to do. There's a lot of other stuff to see though, and I'd, I'd like to go talk about it. You cool? Yes. Let's go. Let's go. So David, this part really excites me because what I see is many different types of 3D printers, manufacturers, right? But they're all running off that laptop, right? Yes. For a farm, that seems incredibly cool because you can manage many different machines. They don't have to be all of the same manufacturer. That's Octo Farm, yes. correct? Yes. Tell me about that because I, I kind of want to do that on my farm. Yes, it, it's actually a really cool system. So one of the biggest, most time-consuming um, 
activities we do here is setting up prints. So setting up all of these printers one by one with single SD cards is very exhausting. It really, it, it drains your soul. It drains your soul, yes yeah. it does. So here we're using my old university laptop, um, uh, an old trusty i7. Uh, That's run, amazing. Uh, it's running a cluster of eight printers at the moment. Okay, obviously you must have some sort of USB hub. Yes, it, it goes from the laptop to a powered USB hub that's hidden somewhere in the tangle of wires. It's the best place to put it's it. It's the best place to put it. It's, it's routed into each of these machines. We have um, a mix of Enders, some old alpha wires. Well, you've got, okay, so back here, what is that? Creality what? That's an Ender 5. Ender 5. Uh, two threes. A A20M, <laughs> I see it. That's X1. A, that's a genius. Oh, that's a genius, that's okay. A genius. That's an Ender 3. Ender no. 3. That's a another Ender 5. Ender 5. That's my first Ender 3. You never forget your <laughs> first. <laughs> another Ender 3. An Ender 5. And a couple of Alpha Ys A20. An Alpha Ys A20. Like, they don't yes. even exist anymore. They don't, they don't for good reason. <laughs> but they're all running off a single laptop. Yes. So in your farm, what you've done is created a way to utilize old, antiquated machines that don't even exist anymore technically, you, and you've created a way to make them productive members of your society. Yes, they're heavily calibrated. We've changed all the hot ends, as you can see. They're all running a Prusa hot end. They all look very Prusa. They're very Prusa. We can use the same settings as a Mark III and same <laughs> results. And it's all automated because now you don't have to do individual SD cards, yes. loading files, testing it out. You just send it from a yeah, laptop. We can preheat everything at once, unload everything at once, and load everything at once. That is and we can track everything. incredible. And tracking, tracking especially is important. important in your line of work, because yes. if you're making a bunch of parts for someone, it's good to know what they came from and if there needs to be uh, tracking back to where they came yes. from. Yes, and since we're working on ISO certification, it's a quality standard. Oh, you have to. We yeah. need to. You have it's to. It's part of it. This was what's great, too, because what David is doing here at Invent3D, obviously you have an, a, a really nice space. You have lots of power. You have windows to a great view of the city. Yes. Um, not everybody has that, but OctoFarm and an old laptop is something that anybody could technically use. And if they get enough USB cables, they could put together their own island of misfit toys yes. print farm. Definitely. That's so cool. You're so inspiring. This is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, next up, there's something really cool that you DIY'd, and I'd like to talk about that Definitely. next. Ready? Ready. This, I'm super excited to talk to you about because it's a DIY solution that enables higher temperature materials to be printed on your farm. Now, can I, can I open this? Of course. Okay, it's a 3D printed part that holds this wooden piece. And if I open that, you see the 3D printed hinges here and inside a Prusa with a dry box. Now, I can imagine you have the need to print things like ABS, polycarbonate, nylons, take your pick, right? How did you come up with such a DIY solution? So we didn't like what was readily available for us on the market. We have shelves, we have printers, so we can print our own enclosures. That was the train of thought. So we use our printers, of course, to print the clasps, magigo holders, you know, snip holders, spool holders, and that carried on to printing a hinge for an enclosure. And the same thing for the back. The back is held in place with another 3D printed component. And this was critical to help us um, in our industrial client base because they would require ABS, Kevlar, nylon, nylon with uh, carbon fiber reinforcement, and that stuff absorbs water like crazy. Like, like nuts. Like nuts, yeah. Especially the TPUs and TPEs are unusable. If what's humidity outside. like here on the oh, island? The humidity is unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> so that dry box is essential, and being able to keep the heat generated by the machine in a space, I would imagine really makes the printing more consistent. Much more consistent. We have the dry box. We're testing uh, Thought 3D's filament dryer now as well for our 1.75 filaments. Which is, that's what's really what we use, um, to have something more consistent. I love this because a lot of times when people come up with an enclosure for their 3D printer, it has to be transparent or they have to yes. be able to see the machine through it. And you're like, it doesn't matter. Just no. put a piece of wood in the front and keep the heat in. Yeah, we know the machine's working. We know it's calibrated. <laughs> you know, uh, we'll have a peak before we leave, but uh, we know that uh, everything's going great. So using this system, have you seen some pretty good success with these materials that you printed? Yeah, with? we use them for everything. These enclosures have been on the, these shelves for about two years now. Two years? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. 
So thousands of hours thousands. of high temperature materials using this DIY enclosure bed. Yes. Well, I know these kind of have to get to work. I'm going to close this up. That's such a great solution. All right, you want to go next? Yes. Let's do it. It's not just final products that go to consumers. This is prototyping right here, right? Yes. So right now we have a cluster of, I believe, 30 parts from our, one of our industrial clients. Um, they needed these by tomorrow morning, basically. Oh. Um, something we do a lot is we help local industries in their 3D printing implementation, their strategy. So uh, we basically help them identify where they can apply 3D printing, and they use us as their print farm, R&D department, and innovation department. That's really cool. And, I, and I, I, get, I get the feeling that you also advise them on their 3D, like I would imagine they provide 3D models that aren't necessarily yes. really fit for 3D printing yes. or could be optimized a bit. Do you definitely. help with that? Uh -huh. So um, definitely, because uh, most of the files we get sent are, you know, pretty broken in terms of ST the way STLs go. I would imagine you broken. see a lot of non-manifold objects. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Nothing holds water. <laughs> so uh, and we help them in their design work as well, in jigs and fixtures. So we know that if they give us a part, we can create something that holds the part for assembly or a, a use case for it. Uh, but yeah, our clients seem to love it. And those, from this though, people that get prototype parts, they can then come back to you and say, these are great, or maybe they need changes, and then you can work with them to get a final part that you might print on your farm. Of course, exactly. You're a full service shop right Everything. here. Everything. All right, well, let's let the robots work. Let's head over here. It's not just melting plastic. I see figurines here, and we've got resin machines behind us. So talk a little bit about how Invent 3D solves problems with resin machines. Sure. So we have our dental section that caters for our dentists and uh, dental technicians. What are you printing for dentists? We print a mix of uh, surgical guides, models. Um, I see. We've printed some ceramic teeth as well for test fits. Really? Uh, yes. That's kind of interesting. We have a couple of printers that have printed just those all of their life. So they're clean, that's they've never been contaminated. That, that's a, a nice okay. and clean process. That's kind of cool. Apart from that, we use our resin machines to print uh, prototypes for people who like injection molding. So we print out the prototypes. We've printed small runs as well. Very small runs though. It's not really worth it. We have used them for NFT projects, for really? limited run NFT projects. Okay. So that's been very interesting as well to try with our customers. Um, so we started off with about 30 photons. 30? Original photons. The originals too? The original photons. Oh, okay. Yes. What Those there? Uh, went through hell. The screens started uh, <laughs> leaving us one by one. Aww. Um, so we got rid of those. We've um, brought in some more new 4K machines. We got the... Sonic Mighty. Sonic Mighty's are great. Oh, those They're are good fast, machines, man. Uh, accurate. I believe out of the box, we've had maybe one or two failures over one year. Oh, that's very, not bad. Very good. Very, very good. And those are what made these? Yes, and we use them to fulfill orders on one of our um, online shops, which is a miniatures shop. So we oh. have D&D um, &D figures, um, fantasy football figures. It's a large four to 5,000 product shop on Etsy and Shopify. Four to 5,000 products. Yes. We bring in our orders, we print on demand, and we ship worldwide. People that get these can paint them. Of course. But, these are, but, these, are, but these are finished products right yes. here. Can I hold one? Definitely. The detail is just stellar on these things. Oh my gosh. This is really cool. I, I love that you're not just an FDM shop. You're solving things with resin and not just miniatures. When people think of uh, print farms and uh, print service providers, if if someone says resin, immediately it's miniatures, but you're doing no. dental applications dental. as well. And I find that really fascinating. What has been, if you know, your best selling miniature? I can't tell you that, it's a secret. One of the things that I had to make sure and stop by is this machine, David, because as you know, I like big printers and I cannot lie, but it looks like it, it, it's custom and it has what looks like either a stool or a column on it. Can you talk a little bit about what this is? Yeah, so this machine is a brainchild of mine and another engineer friend of mine. And essentially we're coming up with a printer and a platform to 3D print furniture, recycled and sustainable furniture. Oh, so the, the machine itself isn't just a one-off 3D printer. The goal here is a platform, something yes. that can produce furniture from recycled materials. Yeah, so this, what you're looking at is the MVP, it's the minimum viable product, where 
Um, it's a one meter cubed printer, it's pellet fed. It prints uh, very specific material from one of our suppliers. Essentially, it's- Pellets, yeah. Yes. Uh, we're creating this printer to then sell as well. It's its own company and the platform where people can order their own custom designer furniture. And this machine oh. will be able to print that. I see, so then as someone could buy then this printer, this platform to create the furniture, but also the company will exist to take in custom designs and of, of people who want custom furniture. And then that could act as a, a print services bureau, but yes. of furniture. Of furniture. Now, one, one of the things that just blew me away is that when we typically talk about a large format FDM machine, most of the time it's a really big bed slinger having to throw, you know, many kilograms of weight back and forth. Or what I've done in the past is seen at the 3D platform where it has a gantry that travels and it looks like that's the case. So how do you sturdy this up to keep this from shaking? So at the moment we found no issues with shaking. It's a very slow machine. Okay. It's not paid for speed, but the kind of nozzle size we're going for here is four mil, five mil. So we're not going to be printing oh. 60 millimeters per second with that, no. But Okay, but at that size, we're talking about furniture fast. Very fast. You don't have to print fast at that nozzle size to get fast. What's your time frame here? Like this, I, I, as you said, MVP. I'm from the software world, so I understand kind of what an MVP yes. is. Um, and obviously, I mean, it, it looks like an MVP. It looks like something is here, and obviously adjustments need to be made. But what's your time frame on this? Because recycled, recycled material furniture as, uh, as, as a platform is very intriguing. Yeah, so we went through a couple of phases of seed funding. Um, we won a best project uh, with, a, with a local uh, with, with TechMT. Congrats. Um, thank you. Uh, so now at this point, we're sourcing more funding to grow this into the two meter by two meter by six meter that it will eventually be. So at first it's columns and stools and then it's chairs and then eventually it's couches. Everything. This has been amazing, David, and I really want to have you tell people about where they can find you and Invent3D and learn about more. Of course. Um, we are on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn. Um, our website, generally speaking, any form of communication works with us. We're really happy, looking forward to work on your products and on your projects. At the end of my episodes, I usually offer the audience a high five because I want to thank them for watching. Will you do that with me? I'd love to. Fantastic. First, I want to thank Construct3D for bringing us out to Malta. And I obviously want to give a massive thanks to Stargate Studios Malta for helping us get all of this done. If you've made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the things. And as always, high five. You want one? Yep. Oh, it stings. <laughs>